Thank you. Now the floor goes to Arbaco Kolari for a minute and a half. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Violence, rape, sexual assault, ma v murder, stalking, these are crimes that affect millions of women every single day. M murder and these kinds of crimes uh, are often caused by the partner. And of course, these are among those crimes which are never investigated, not taking seriously. And one out of three women are affected by this kind of violence, and the corona pandemic has increased this significantly. In Turkey, it's even worse. Four out of 10 women in Turkey have experienced violence. And it, when it can't get worse, well, then Turkey's government says they withdraw from the Istanbul Convention, which guarantees legal protection for women who are victims of violence. So this is 10 years after uh, Turkey's ratification of the convention in Istanbul itself. This is a scandal. This is an en enormous assault against women's legal rights. And we have to uh, condemn this when we've seen this from the Council of Europe, from the US. So we have to have d make demands in our relationship with Turkey that we can't tolerate this and Turkey has to rejoin the convention. And I really hope that this debate can lead to increasing the pressure both on the EU's leadership and on Turkey's leadership and the, and those who are responsible in the parliament for the Istanbul Convention they have to see that there is work, this work is, needs to be continued. And this is a fight that we have to take much more seriously. And I think this is our time's new freedom question, standing up for women's rights. Now the floor goes to Pina Picerno for one minute. Thank you, Madam Vice President. We've seen two different types of news in recent days. On the one hand, we're seeing a positive agenda for EU-Turkey relations being taken forward. And now we see Erdogan flying in the face of freedom, cracking down on women's rights and the rights of the people of Turkey. These seem to be news items from different places, but if our content is to improve its relations with Turkey, how can this go hand in hand with Erdogan having a free hand to sweep her human rights under the carpet and undermine rights and freedoms? It's not the first time in history that this has happened. There is an this totalitarian ideology is an aberration it's from another era. But if you look at the Balkans, the Middle East, the Maghreb, what history teaches us is uh, way, the way things will go. But we have to listen to that voice of history. It's Turkey's own people, women, journalists, students, minorities, who are asking how long this will go on before it is condemned by the rest of the Mediterranean. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Susanna Ceccardi for one minute. Lamento. Lament. To be a woman means being invaded. They took of me everything. A woman took my childhood, a man my womanhood. God should not create woman God does not know how to give birth. Here, the ribs of all men are broken. Our neck is thinner than hair. Men are carrying us like a funeral on their shoulders. We have been under their feet, light like a feather. We flew from a world to an atom, and my words are their footprints. Turkish poet Musar Yeniay. In Turkey, 300 women were murdered in 2020. In the last 10 years, the number of women killed in Turkey has tripled. There are many female political prisoners, and withdrawing from the Istanbul Convention is the latest proof that Turkey is far from having Western values. For women, for European values, for freedom, let us say again, Turkey is not Europe. Thank you. And now the floor goes to Sylvia Spurek for one minute. Uh, 
Pani Przewodnicząca. Madam President, Madam Commissioner. First and foremost, I would like to express my solidarity with Turkish women who are protesting against this deprivation of rights and protection. We are appalled by what Turkey is doing, but let us look closer at home. Poland, a member state, is a step away from following suit, but the EU is doing nothing. The Polish parliament, the lower chamber, might decide that a citizen's draft law, a citizen's bill, will be under investigation in order to renounce the convention. The Prime Minister has made the following request to the Constitutional Court. The convention is allegedly in accordance with the Constitution. Now the Constitutional Court that has deprived us of the possibility to have legal abortion can renounce the convention. If you take your commitment seriously, you can't wait because it will be too late in a moment. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Nikolai Vilimsen for one minute. This decision to withdraw Turkey from the Istanbul Convention, this decision legitimizes violence against women, that legitimizes a kind of violence which affects almost 40% of the female population in Turkey. This is violence in 2019 uh, killed almost 500 women. And this is violence that has to be stopped. Since this decision was announced, brave women in Turkey have gone out into the streets in protest. They need our support. They need our solidarity. And they need clear criticism of Erdogan from the EU leaders. This attack against female rights has to be condemned. Women are being abused, killed, so the EU has to act. Thank you. Now for a minute and a half we have Rosa Esteras Ferrego. Thank you, Madam President, uh, Commissioner, Minister, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in uh, May uh, 2011, 2011, the Istanbul Convention was signed. In fact, Turkey was the first country to sign it, and that is why it bears the name of uh, Istanbul. Since then, uh, uh, more and more countries have ratified this convention. We have always been in the EU uh, in the forefront of the fight against violence against women and this uh, instrument is uh, the most important one that we have to try to fight this social scourge and uh, uh, attack uh, these shameful acts of violence uh, throughout the world. Uh, human rights and protection thereof is an intrinsic value of the EU uh, as our fundamental rights and unfortunately uh, uh, Recently, the Turkish government has abandoned uh, the Istanbul Convention on spurious uh, reasons, deliberately misunderstanding it. Uh, this is an assault on human rights and tramples underfoot women's rights. It also will mean uh, more victims and less democracy in a country where more than 400 uh, uh, women uh, die in a, on a daily basis. This is sending out uh, the wrong signal to the world. In 2019, 400 uh, uh, shoes were women's shoes were uh, hung up uh, to demonstrate about uh, this phenomenon in Turkey. In in commemoration of the more than 400 uh, women uh, killed by their partners, how many more shoes will have to be hung up in uh, Istanbul to show the Turkish government that uh, fundamental human rights are at stake? Thank you very much. Now for one minute, Nacho Sanchez Amor. Thank you, Madam President. As a rapporteur on Turkey, there are two points I'd like to focus on. Decisions running counter to democratic rights and the timing of this withdrawal. We need to keep democratic conditionality in our relations with Turkey. An activist for human rights had immunity withdrawn, and the third political party, the partner of our European socialists, suffered the consequences. And 
there was a video meeting with the Turkish leader, which was maintained by the Commission. So this decision in relation to the Convention was hours after that conversation between Michel von der Leyen and Erdogan. Con to con the decision to continue with the positive agenda without taking account of human rights. So this situation regarding uh, human rights is now being interpreted as a green light from the EU for Turkey to crack down on its democratic opposition. So we need our contacts with the Turkish opposition that feel let down by the EU. We need to keep democratic conditionality. We've kept it in Parliament. Council and Commission should do the same. Gilles Breton. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Gilles Breton for a minute and a half. Dear colleagues, the, on the 20th of March we learned that Turkey was withdrawing from the 2011 Istanbul Convention. Uh, this is an event with a huge political input, import. Uh, the Istanbul Convention is the main European instrument to fight violence against women. It is true that the text is imperfect. Uh, it is a, overly feminist in its preamble, uh, in the way it sort of... Uh, pits women against men, but it has the merit of protecting women against any kind of violence, including uh, domestic violence, rape, forced marriage, or uh, female genital mutilation. This is why, personally, I have always defended the Istanbul Convention, and by withdrawing from this, Turkey is turning its back on equality between men and women, which is one of the fundamental values of European civilization. As a symbol, this withdrawal is a declaration of war that uh, should concern us. Uh, Erdogan is clearly allying uh, with the most retrograde forms of Islamism. We need to draw the conclusions of this and uh, stop uh, the, the accession process of Turkey to the EU. It's a pointless uh, process and we have to act now. Thank you now for one minute, Terry Reitke. Thank you, Madam Chair, Minister, Commissioner, colleagues. Every year, just as in the European Union, hundreds of women are killed by their partners, ex-partners and close relatives in Turkey. Thousands are battered, raped and beaten. After deciding to withdraw from the Istanbul Convention, you might argue that Erdogan does not care about this brutal violence against women. But actually, it is worse. Autocrats like Erdogan and his lookalikes in the European Union are afraid of free and independent women. They are afraid of societies where women can freely decide about their own bodies, their money and their lives. They are afraid of the strength of women's and LGBTI movements. And that is why they hate the Istanbul Convention. That is why they hate for us to be protected from discrimination and violence. And that is why they attack our freedom and independence. We cannot let these autocrats win. Neither in Turkey nor in the European Union. Solidarity to all the feminists and queers who are standing up to this in Turkey right now. But most of all, we need to have the full accession, ratification and implementation of the Istanbul Convention all over Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now the floor goes for one minute to Liazi Sirek. Thank you, Madam Chair. Turkish presidency wants to justify the withdrawal from Istanbul Convention by claiming that it is incompatible with Turkey's social and family values and argues that women in Turkey are already protected by Turkish values and traditions. What values and traditions? Those of Turkish patriarchy? In Turkey, on average, every day five women are killed. 61% of women is subjected to physical violence by their partners, fathers, or brothers. 
withdrawing from convention, which aims to prevent domestic violence against women in a country such as Turkey, where women more tripled in, what, in past 10 years, is to leave the woman at the mercy of male domination. On top of that, Turkey justifies the withdrawal by attacking the LGBTI community, an open violation of sexual liberty. The European Union should show zero tolerance to the Turkish government, which day by day becomes more authoritarian and more and more disrespects the fundamental human rights. We need to make all necessary steps in order to provide strong protection and promotion of the rights and freedoms of women and LGBTI community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Cindy Franzen. Uh, one minute. Thank you, well, for the Thank you, Madam President, Commissioner, Minister, colleagues. The Istanbul Convention is the first legally binding treaty that obliges member states to prevent domestic violence and to do their best to combat it. And yet, in the last few months, uh, violence against women has increased alarmingly as a result of the lockdowns. Uh, no less than one in uh, five women have been confronted with domestic violence in the last few months. At this very moment, Turkey decides to withdraw from the convention. <clears throat> the President of the Commission has always defended uh, the uh, ratification of the Istanbul Convention as one of her top priorities. It is time to put words into deeds. Some people want to turn the clock back. So I really urge the Commission to give a very clear signal on this to Turkey and also to set a good example by ensuring that uh, the remaining member states are encouraged to ratify the convention so that uh, European ratification will no longer be blocked. Colleagues, how long do we have to wait uh, to do what has to be done? Thank you. The floor goes to uh, Ms. Fritzen. One minute. Madam Speaker, Council, Commission, we have a convention in order to fight violence against women, and it bears the name of a city where fighting violence against women is no longer important. The Istanbul Convention, perhaps it seems like a matter of course that any person, every person should enjoy a life free from violence, but that's not the case in Turkey. Their action is an attack against women's human rights, against democracy, and against the rule of law. Women experience violence, and women are murdered. We Social Democrats in Parliament have clearly contemned, condemned Turkey's decision, and today we expect that the member states in the EU do the same. The Istanbul Convention should remain a reminder that we should never accept violence against women and girls. We're talking about their lives. Thank you. Thank you. Madame Łukaciejewska, one minute. Thank you very much, Madam President, Madam Commissioner, dear colleagues. Uh, Women and girls should never be subject to violence because its effects are disastrous for mental health, for uh, her future family and development. Uh, Mr. Erdogan, uh, when renouncing the convention, talked about imposing a gender-based uh, technology, uh, ideology, LGBTI, and undermining traditional family values. The very same arguments are being used by the government in Poland. Poland would like to renounce the convention, punish abortion, uh, and ban divorces. They do not want to punish uh, husbands who b beat up their wife once only. I'm horrified because this is a blow against families, in fact. This is discarding women from founding families, and no one is protesting. Why aren't the women from the Polish government protesting against this? Where is solidarity? 
I do not know whether Erdogan will change his mind, but I certainly hope that uh, we in Europe will not renounce this convention because only weak men are afraid of strong women. Only weak politicians pretending to be macho want to allow such uh, actions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Pernil Weiss. Uh, one minute. Minst At least 38% of women in Turkey experience violence at the hands of their partners. So, for that reason, it's not wrong to note that the value that of Turkey being in the uh, Europe Convention for 10 years is actually zero. The Convention has as an intention to prevent violence against women, uh, mutilation of girls and women's genitalia. And this convention is named after Istanbul, which ironically is in the border region between Europe and the Arab world. But when Erdogan wants to satisfy his supporters with their medieval mindsets and find a new way of provoking the EU, a country which will always, never be a member of the EU, then he sacrifices his women's health, safety, well-being, and freedom. And it's sickening to witness this. And I think this disgust should help us to speed up our efforts to work against Erdogan. Turkish women and all decent people deserve that, all the people who deserve that, who, who trust in uh, agreements to make the world a better place. Thank you. I give the floor to Madame Vosenberg Virionidi. One minute. Thank you, Madam President. 350 women are murdered every year in Turkey, according to the World Health Organization. That is um, higher than the European average. There are cases that are declared as suicide which are not even recorded in those figures. In times of uh, pandemic, of course, there is more violence against women and the victims are not being supported. Erdogan has now announced his intention to withdraw from the Istanbul Convention in, in a meeting where equal rights of, of women were on the agenda. There have been condemnations by the United Nations, by heads of state, uh, uh, calls on Erdogan to uh, retract this step. But he ignores this. Uh, he doesn't respect uh, the rule of law. I think we should oblige Turkey to respect human rights and fundamental rights. It, it, we have to... Uh, Thank you very much. And now I give the floor to Madame Commissioner, Madame